This planet is just right. One of the big, big questions we have asked is, are we alone out here or is there life elsewhere in the galaxy? And we've spent a lot of time thinking about this question. We've made movies about UFOs and aliens. We use radio telescopes for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And recently, we have used tools like the Kepler telescope to get us one step closer to possibly answering this question. Now, the Kepler telescope is in orbit around Earth, and it looks at around 150,000 stars. It measures the light coming from that star, and if that light dims just the tiniest amount, it could indicate that there is a planet crossing or transiting its star. Something is passing between the star and the telescope. Now, traditionally, NASA would follow up these transit signals with lots more observations to verify whether or not it was a planet. And up until about 2016, they had verified 984 exoplanets. And about 12 of those are thought to be small, rocky planets similar to Earth in size and orbiting their respective star's Goldilocks zone. That's the orbital pathway around a star where we think it's possible for life to exist. But in May of 2016, NASA researchers announced a revolutionary way to verify planets, and it uses statistical probability, and it's really sped things up. So what they do is they look at the likelihood of any one transit signal possibly being a planet. How much like a planet does that appear to be? Then they take into consideration the likelihood of a false positive, or what they call imposters. They assign each signal a number between 0 and 1. If it has a greater than 99% probability of being a planet, it's verified. Boom! Now we have 1,284 new exoplanets on the list, nine of which are probably rocky-like planets within that Goldilocks zone. That brings the grand total of rocky plants that could support life up to 21! And yeah, that sounds like a small number, but it is the tip of an unimaginably huge iceberg. Hear me out. For the Kepler telescope to detect a planet, that planet's orbital plane has to be perpendicular to the telescope. This happens about 0.5% of the time. Plus, it's only looking at 150,000 stars, and I know that sounds like a lot, but the Milky Way galaxy has 100 billion stars in it. According to NASA researcher Natalie Battaglia, about 24% of stars in our galaxy are expected to have planets that are Earth-like and rocky and within that Goldilocks zone. That gives us a total of about 10 billion planets possibly harboring life. Now here's some sad news. We've got some telescopes going up in the near future, like the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite and the James Webb Space Telescope, which will look for other exoplanets, but they're not precise enough to get a better look at these small, rocky ones we've already identified. We might be able to use some ground-based telescopes to get a better look at the atmospheres of these planets and look for any sort of biosignature gases, which could be an indication that life is present but we're probably gonna have to wait a while to build more precise, technologically advanced and sophisticated equipment to really get a look at these places. Still, we might be answering that big, big question sooner rather than later. And in the meantime, I have a question for all of you. What would the discovery of alien life mean to you personally? How would you react? I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring this show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button and join the Forward Thinking Think Tank by subscribing to our channel. Then check out these other amazing videos about the future right over here.